Thank you. Um, I will ask each member of the forum present to confirm that they can hear and be heard. This is a legal requirement for virtual meetings. Um, where practicable, please also have your video switched on. So um, we've had apologies from Alison Banner. David Bennett, are you? Yes, I'm here and I can hear. Thank you, David. Christine Bryan. Not present at the moment, Chair. No, okay. Um, Alex Davis, I can see you. Can you hear? Hello, I'm here and I can hear. Hi, morning. Um, Paul <laughs> Deneen. I sent apologies, Chair. Okay. Uh, Nick, oh, sorry, um, Nikki Gilbert. Mm, Nikki's not present yet. Okay. Andy Gosling. No, not present no. yet, Chair. Georgie Griffin, you're here. And I can hear you. Thank you. Thank you. Richard Foster. Yes, and I can yes. hear you. Thank you. Sue Jenkins. Uh, Sue has sent apologies this morning. Okay. Paul Jennings. Yes. Uh, yes, and I can hear you clearly. Thank you. Thank you. Steve Kendrick. Don't think I've seen Steve. No. No. Tim Knapp, I can see Tim. Good morning, yes, I can hear you. Thank you. Chris Lewandowski, yes, I can see Chris. Good morning, yes, I can both see and hear you. Morning. Rose Lloyd, we've got Rose. Yes, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Um, Carol Rushton, as a substitute. Yes, I can, yes, I can hear, see and hear you from ASDR. Morning. morning, Carol. Yeah. And Andrew Teal as a substitute. Morning, Andrew. Morning, everyone. Yeah, I can hear. Thanks. OK. Um, we have the following officers also in attendance. Uh, Sarah Buffery as our clerk. Morning, Chair. Ma Malcolm Green, Strategic Finance Manager. Morning. Uh, good morning, Kathy. I can see and hear you. Les Knight, Head of Additional Needs. Morning, Les. Morning, Kathy. Yeah, I can see and hear you. Thank you. Uh, Kerry Morgan, Assistant Director, Education, Development and Skills. Morning, yeah, Kerry. Mo morning, Cathy. Morning, all. Yeah, I can see in here. Thank you. Thank you. James Vickery, Democratic Services. Uh, no, he's not with us this morning, uh, no? Chair, and, uh, and neither is Jen. So. OK, Just thank me you. This morning. OK, good morning, everyone. Uh, and I think we also have Councillor Diana Toynbee with us this morning. Yes, good morning, everyone. I can Welcome. see and hear you, Cathy. Thanks. Thank you. The agenda papers and other relevant information for this meeting are available for public viewing on the Herefordshire Council website. So the Council is streaming this meeting live on the Herefordshire Council YouTube channel and a recording will be available via the school's website shortly, shortly after the meeting has concluded. Others are permitted to film or photograph and record our public meetings, providing that it doesn't disrupt the business of the meeting. If I could just remind people that microphones should be muted unless you are speaking to prevent any background noise. When invited to speak, if you could unmute your microphone once you have finished um, and once you have finished, mute it again. Could you also please raise your the hand icon uh, to indicate if you wish to speak and please remember to lower it when you have actually um, made your speech. Where forum, forum members are required to vote on an item, uh, we will conduct an electronic vote where the majority of attendees are eligible. Ma um, is, there is no voting this morning, am I, am I right in saying? Uh, there will be votes just on um, the, the just, basic items, but they okay. should be straightforward. Chair. Okay. If there are any problems with the electronic vote or only a limited subgroup are eligible to vote, I will ask each member in turn to indicate verbally if they are for, against or abstaining. If a forum member has not been present for the whole of the discussion on an item, they should abstain from the vote. Are there any questions about the procedures before we continue with this morning's agenda? 
Thank you. So um, item one, apologies. Chair, do we have any apologies today? You mentioned one or two when we were signing in. Um, yes, so apologies I've received from Alison Banner, Paul Deneen, Nikki Emmett, Sue Jenkins, Tracy Neal and Sean Lyons. Thank you. And uh, item two, named substitute. We, uh, we have uh, named substitutes this morning, I gather. Yes, have we noted we've got uh, Carol Rushton for Paul Deneen and Andrew Teal for Sean Lyons. Thank you. Item three, declarations of interest. Are there any declarations of interest to be made this morning, please? No, thank you. And item four, um, minutes approval. To approve and sign the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of January. Are there any matters arising that are not dealt with elsewhere on the agenda, please? If you could bring up your voting screen. If you were not present at that meeting, you should abstain from the vote. Thank you, Chair. That should appear on um, people's screens in just a moment. Uh, there we go. Those, yes, those have yeah. been uh, approved, Chair. Thank you. Item five, election of vice chairperson. And this is to elect a vice chairperson for the remainder of the academic year following the resignation of the previous vice chair. Julie Cohn has resigned as governor and a trustee of Accordia Academies Trust and is therefore no longer eligible to be a member of the school's forum. Um, the forum needs to elect a new vice chairperson to hold this role for the remainder of this year. I call for nominations for the role of vice chairperson for the uh, Herefordshire Schools Forum. Did we have, um, did I understand that um, we do have somebody who was willing to be nominated? Yeah, I think, I think Paul um, was trying to unmute, where is it? <laughs> I, yeah, I'm trying to unmute and put my hand up at the same time, Chair, I do apologise. Um, yes, um, it's my understanding that Alison Banner um, was willing to stand as Vice Chair. Um, there was discussion um, amongst uh, secondary colleagues and, and we were supporting her to be nominated. So I would like to nominate Alison Banner, please, as vice chair. Thank you. And uh, do we have anybody who will second that proposal, please? I can second it as one of the secondary members. Thank you, David. Are there any other nominations for this position of vice chairperson? Please. Okay. Um, the candidate has been added to the voting system, which will appear shortly on your screen. If you could please cast your vote and press the submit button. If you cannot see the voting screen or unable to vote, please raise your hand. Would the clerk please now begin bring up the voting screen? Um, Clark, we have Paul and Steve with hands raised. Yeah, I think Paul's is a le legacy hand. I think, Steve, were you having difficulty seeing the voting screen again? <laughs> That's fine. Um, did, did you want to indicate your your vote verbally? And I'll add that to the tally. Yeah. Thank you, Steve. Yeah. 
that's fine. Uh, yeah, so that has been uh, that has been carried, and uh, Alison Banner duly appointed chair. Thank you. Um, and could I just take this opportunity to um, note, please, that we thank Julie for all her hard work um, for this forum, both as chair and in the short term that she was vice chair. And I know she's done a lot of work. Thank you. So if we go to item six, um, the uh, high needs budget for um, 22-23, um, and I would like to call on Malcolm, please, to present this report. Uh, thank you, Cathy. Um, I've prepared a short presentation to cover the detail in the report, uh, and I'm very happy to take questions as we go through the report, uh, if anybody uh, wishes to ask uh, or alternatively say them at the end. Um, the report has been discussed in detail with the Budget Working Group, and the working group was content to um, for the budget to go forward to schools forum. I'll uh, share my screen with you now and take you through it. Um, obviously, the detail is uh, contained in the paper you've had previously with the agenda. Right. Um, can everybody see see the uh, the screen? Um, I'd like to start by talking about the outturn for this current year, twenty one twenty two. Uh, we are forecasting an overspend of just over six hundred thousand uh, pound, or zero point six million, uh, and this is due to. overspends on mainstream top-ups, uh, which is the high needs top-ups payments to primary and secondary schools of 471,000 and independent, independent out of county places of uh, 900,000. Uh, unfortunately, uh, and this has been a long time coming, the overspend will reduce our available uh, DSG balances from a surplus last year of not 0.4 million to a small deficit of 0.25 million. Um, and as such, we join the vast majority of local authorities around the country uh, who have slipped into deficit. <coughs> the deficit is only small and is well within the 1% criteria uh, that the DFE used for intervention. Um, We have arranged, or we are in the process of arranging a discussion with uh, the DFE uh, for a day later in uh, May, I believe, after Easter, when we will have a discussion uh, and see any advice they may be able to give us. Um, so I can report back to forum uh, in due course at the next meeting. The high needs budget for 22-23 is balanced. Uh, we live within the income we've been given and uh, the budget covers the overspend uh, in the two items on mainstream top ups and independent county places. Uh, and it has a little bit of growth built into both of those budgets. Uh, and this is large. We've been able to do this largely because of an additional 0.8 million that has been allocated to the high needs budget as part of the supplementary grant. Uh, allocated by the DFE before Christmas. Uh, just a little recap on the proposals that were published in the school's consultation paper in the autumn. Um, and you can see we were already expecting significant growth in the out of county places. Um, <clears throat> There are proposals in the budget to increase the tariffs uh, from A to C and D to F, which is inflation. Uh, and those were in the um, proposals in the autumn. Um, so I'll just move on. The changes that have 
come from um, the autumn are we have increased the um, independent special schools, the Yankton County schools by 0.4 million to cover the overspend. Uh, the PRU management committee have asked us for uh, additional um, alter alternative provision on the, out the outdoor, uh, at the dining and door center, and we have provided 150,000 to cover 10 extra places. Uh, there is, <clears throat> The 1.25% national insurance levy, uh, which for special schools in the PRU, the proposal is we will fund that at £100 per place. Uh, there is the growth in overspend on the mainstream top-ups, as I've talked about, and we continue to provide the SEM protection scheme, uh, which funds mainstream schools uh, with above average numbers of high needs pupils, um, funds the £6,000 uh, threshold payments that the schools have to find themselves and that is 0.5 million and that funding has been set at the amount that schools forum agreed to transfer into the high needs block from the schools block. There are some adjustments that we've made uh, going down um, cost reductions from the autumn proposals which were to reduce special school places by 10. Uh, this is largely because special schools are full uh, and we would be unable, uh, as much as we might wish to, to uh, provide an extra 10 places. I've deleted the contingency. <clears throat> uh, the minimum funding guarantee for special schools was not required, so that has been taken out of the budget because of the increases in tariffs last year. Uh, I've made some reductions in underspending budgets, and uh, we no longer, <clears throat> and the cost of the SEM protection scheme is fully funded from the school's block transfer. So that saves a little bit of money on the high needs block as well. Uh, just to set out the money we have got available, uh, within dedicated schools grant, we were given 22.1 million. Uh, <clears throat> There was the supplementary grant, which was unexpected, uh, which is 0.8 million, uh, which gives us a total of just round about 23 million to allocate. Uh, the DFE deduct at source places for special school academies, and you can see set out there, uh, 90 places at Brookfield, um, 75 pre-16 places at Balls Court, 18, post 16 places at Bars Court, 46 new places at the um, new Beacon College, and then places uh, that have been agreed in uh, further education colleges. Uh, and I think, believe there are two post 16 places at the Hereford Sixth Form College, uh, giving deductions of just over three million pound. Uh, so the budget schools forum needs to um, endorse today is the 19.695 million set out at the bottom. Uh, within the, the schools forum papers that you received was a detailed set of recommendations which set out the line by line allocation of funding to the various budget heads. Uh, there are two amendments that are necessary to correct an error in my uh, detailed budget model. The first one is the high needs contingency, which is recommendation R, uh, needs to be set to zero pounds, and it was in the recommendations at 68,000. And the LA recruitment income in rec recommendation T2 uh, needs to be 211,508, and it was previously 200,000. The adjustment in total is 75,000 pound. Um, if you could mark these on your your papers uh, and uh, when we come to uh, vote on the recommendations, um, please bear in mind that we need to amend uh, these two lines uh, in order for the report to the cabinet member for approval to be fully accurate. Uh, I apologize for, uh, for these uh, late corrections. The proposed budget uh, in full is set out in the next two or three slides. Um, the amount of money spent on every um, budget head is set out. Um, 
The key ones, uh, the independent um, out of county special schools is now 2.9 million. Uh, and that has gone up by 1.1 million uh, in one year, uh, which is clearly a significant um, increase of probably around about 60, 60 odd percent uh, from the previous year. Uh, that is marked in red. The other item that has gone up significantly are the mainstream school top ups, which is now 2.8 million, and that has gone up by 700,000, again, marked in red. Uh, the item in green, high needs contingency, uh, <clears throat> is now zero, as I've, um, as I've discussed. Um, the other items in there that are, uh, <clears throat> you can see the adjustments in there. Um, the PRU top-ups have been reduced by 153,000, uh, and that is offset by the income that the PRU <clears throat> will now keep from invoicing schools directly. Uh, the previous arrangements were the PRU provided the information to me, I sent the invoices to schools uh, and kept the income. Um, and then when the schools queried the invoices, I had to go back to the PRU for the answers. Uh, we've agreed with the PRU that it's far more effective uh, and efficient for the PRU to invoice directly to schools. Uh, and so that is a um, reduction in the income uh, in the budget offset by the income of the PRU keep. There is the increase in the PRU outdoor alternative provision, 156,000. Uh, I've added 46,000 onto the teach and pay grant for the uh, national insurance levy. Uh, 415,000 um, has been allocated for inflation on the high needs tariffs. That's 3% on tariffs A to C and 6% on tariffs D to F. Uh, D to F are the tariffs mainly in special schools uh, and they uh, require a 6% increase, uh, which is because half of the budget that special schools have is the fixed 10,000 pound per place. So in order to give special schools the full 3% uh, increase in inflation, uh, the tariffs must increase by double. Uh, there are some <clears throat> uh, protections we need to pay to the PRU following the restructuring that we had um, in the summer. Uh, the SEN support services have all increased by inflation, um, <clears throat> with the exception of the behaviour support team, and uh, we were concerned that the behaviour support team was not viable without an increase in funding. And 37,500 was approved in de-delegation uh, by the January meeting. And um, we agreed at that time it will be matched by an increase in the high needs uh, budget. And that's the corresponding 37,500 um, in the behaviour support team. Uh, with the pending publication of the DFE send review, uh, we felt it premature to um, <clears throat> change the way the behaviour support team worked, and this funding will allow the continuation of that team's work for the next 12 months, uh, and certainly whilst we consider the implications of the send review when it's finally published. Uh, the other adjustment there in green is the uh, change to the LA recruitment income that I've talked about. Uh, I've already explained about the PRU charging uh, and recovery of the OPU. <clears throat> uh, the three important, the important work streams for schools forum for the next 12 months will be firstly the DFE send review, which we expect to <clears throat> receive this Easter. Um, we will need to continue to keep under review the PRU and the impact of training to make sure the PRU continues to be viable. Uh, we will be entering the second year of the nurture provision and we need to review the success and future impact of that uh, service and any funding implications for the future. Uh, in order, and in order to deal with the continued growth of the out of county um, places, budget, uh, we are looking to establish a new secondary autism base 
uh, to reduce our out of county costs. Um, Les Knight will be able to say more about that um, in due course. Uh, the next step after today is we will be looking for a cabinet member approval of the high needs budget by the 31st of March, uh, and then hopefully the publication of the DFE send review. Um, that I think is the end of the public, the, the end of my presentation. Uh, I'm happy to take any questions um, from forum members before we move to the recommendations. I'll uh, I'll stop sharing the screen. Um, back to you, Kathy. Thank you. Before we go to questions, Les, is there anything you would like to add? Yeah, there's a number of observations on Malcolm's slides, really in explanatory terms for people attending the meeting. So um, the, the independent schools growth, and it is a, a significant growth. Um, I think it has grown from, um, you know, something like four or five hundred thousand uh, less than five years ago to its current level of uh, two million plus, you know. Um, is a direct result of uh, lack of uh, special school places. So um, the demand has, has increased in exponentially for uh, those places, in particular <laughs> SEMH places and autism places. So that links directly to the last slide that Malcolm showed in terms of um, a secondary autism hub. Um, I won't call it a unit actually, but um, which is intended to um, offer provision that replaces some of those out of county independent school places. So, you know, that, that's work that is uh, underway uh, and is being developed alongside um, representatives of the um, National Autism Society, Autistic Society. Um, so we get their input in doing that. Um, so uh, the, the tariff increases is a direct result of demand for EHC plans and other um, top up funding outside of um, EHC plans. Uh, the demand currently year to date is running at about 38% higher last time we calculated than the previous year. And there have already been significant increases since 2015 in those figures. And that, of course, has a knock on effect to the number of um, SEM protection payments that we need need to make that were presented elsewhere in the presentation. Um, so um, the behaviour support team, it's a tiny glimmer of good news, having done, re, uh, it wasn't done in time for this meeting, because we've. Um, but uh, we believe that the supplement to the behaviour support team might be slightly less than the 37 and a half. Um, you know, our intention is for that team to simply manage to break even and continue to exist because we do believe it's a, a plank in the um, continuum of provision to prevent, um, you know, children moving to more specialist placements uh, for, for some children or to make sure that other children get their needs met. So uh, we wouldn't very loathe to lose that service. Um, and so we're trying to balance trading with supporting, if that makes some sort of sense. Um, Thank you, Les, for clarifying those. And lastly, the PRU on the last slide. Yeah, Malcolm's right. We do need, they have had a, um, they have had um, a significant remodelling with the numbers of, um, if you remember, going down from 80 to 50 places. Um, we, we knew that wouldn't be the long term number. Uh, we predict that to be somewhere in the region of 65 to 70 but we couldn't carry the staffing through. And then COVID has compounded that because we struggled to get a true picture of demand from schools because of the, the, the change in flow of demand caused by lockdown and then not lockdown. So um, we need to keep an eye on them. We, again, we need a very viable um, central PRU system for our alternative provision because the market we have in Herefordshire is not necessarily able to offer everything that schools might need. So um, 
yeah, those are, those are my observations on that. So. Uh, thank you for that, Les, for adding clarity to um, some of those slides. Um, if I could call upon uh, Nikki, would you, you have a question? Um, yeah, just a bit of clarification, really, on some of the slides. Um, so Les has just um, explained the increase in out-of-county placements because the special schools are full. But on slide five, it proposes a reduction of special school places by 10. Just interested to know where the logic behind that is. Yeah, OK, uh, I'll, I'll take that. Um, the, there are very few extra places left, as you know, every, all of the schools mostly are saying that they're full and we're having to make independent placements. So um, that, that's the logic behind it. Um, but it's a moving target as um, we try and find um, interim solutions. We have long, longer term solutions in the capital investment strategy for rebuilding and extending schools. But um, there are also interim solutions. So you may well be right, Nikki, that that, that might need to be adjusted if we find. Um, but physically, we cannot fit any more children in, this, in the, the current spaces. So unless we find alternative premises, then um, it, we will not need those places. Can I, can I just add to that? Yeah. Can I just add to that, Nikki, please? Yeah. Um, the... Budget proposals in the autumn are uh, proposed an increase in special school places of 20. Uh, because special schools are full, I have reduced that proposed increase to 10. So that is where we save. It's not a reduction in special school places. It's simply a reduction um, in the addition, as it were. Uh, it's probably quite likely that uh, we will not be able to uh, actually inc increase special school places by other than one or two, because as Les says, those places are full. So rather than planning an expansion of special school places by 20, I have put in the budget a reduced expansion of 10, which I don't expect to spend on either. So I hope that makes it clear. It is not a reduction in the number of places we are commissioning, far from it. Has that answered your query, Nikki? Yeah, without looking at the thing that was proposed previously, um, but yeah, I'll take Martin on that. The other thing is on page six, um, with the um, funding of post-16 places, you've got 18 post-16 special school places and 46 post-16 free school places. And Malcolm, you mentioned that the 18 post-16 special school places were at Bars Court, but that is the 46, surely. So I'm just wondering where those 18, would that be at my school then? Um, um, yes, you're probably right, Nikki. The information we get from uh, the Education Skills Funding uh, Council doesn't make it clear where those 18 are. Uh, well, the, no, those are 18 deducted at source, right? And it's only the 18 places that ESFA have deducted at source. The places at Westfield are commissioned in full. And I believe we've commissioned 68 places from you, which will include your post-16 places. I don't know. We haven't had the letter yet. So no, I well, I, I, I believe, I mean, Les will be writing to you to commission those places. Uh, but I think that I've got 68 places in the budget, uh, which is comparable with your current numbers. And that will include your post-16 places. So where are the other 18 then? Because well, the other, the, the other 18 uh, are, that is information that was uh, provided by... Uh, the Education Skills Funding Agency, and I can only assume they're at Bars Court. But Bars Court is the free school now, so there aren't 18. There are 46 at Beacon. Uh, there are 46 at Beacon. That has been agreed with uh, ESFA, <clears throat> and ESFA have deducted 18 uh, further post-16 places from our, <clears throat> from our DSG. If, yeah, you, if, you believe, if you believe that's wrong, Nikki, then we will have to go back and argue with and, and, and raise that as a point with them. 
Well, I think Les would argue that that is wrong because there are 46 post-16 students at Beacon College, which is Barsport Sixth Form, and there are 15 post-16 students at my school. So I don't know where those fictional 18 at source have come from. So you're, you're looking at 180 grand from somewhere that isn't given to either school, unless Les knows differently. No, I, I don't. Um, the, the, some t because of the establishment of Beacon College, there has been you know a bit of kind of flux in the figures that the ESFA have been providing with. with. So thank you. Yeah, we'll go and investigate that. So Because it specifies the 46 preschool places separately from ESFA funded, which is academy. Well, there's no longer a sixth form academy other than the free school. So, you know, it's a lot of money. I think that, yes, I, I agree with you uh, looking at that and listening to what you've said. I think there, there is possibly double di subtraction by the ESFA because they still believe that um, Bars Court Hub is still open. Or parts of it, you know, a number, a number of places, the 18 places. So we need to check that. Because we can't approve this budget if that's on it. Um, well, the, the budget that is before Schools Forum today <clears throat> is the net budget that uh, is after the ESFA deductions. Uh, if we go back to ESFA and they... Uh, revise that 18 downwards, then actually that will give us more money in our net budget, which will only help us for uh, meet our pressures for this year. Okay, so can we, when we, when this has gone to cabinet and everything, can we re revisit this at the next forum to know that that's happened? Uh, we can do that. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we have adjustments all of the time. That's all, you know, all I would say. I mean, I, ideally, we, we do get this accurate at the beginning of the year, but there are ongoing adjustments to this budget as we go. OK, Nikki, are you happy with that? And we'll um, put this on an agenda for a future yeah, to I'm, clarify. Oh, yeah, I'm still very confused, but I'm happy as I can be at the moment, yeah. Uh, Chris, you've got a question to raise. Yes, thank you, Chair. Um, a couple of questions, really. Once again, it relates to the independent schools section. Now, in the slides, it was suggested that the cost for the independent placements had risen by 60% in one go, which is an awful lot. Now, Les has explained that some of that is because of an increased number of pupils, but I assume some of it is because they've put their prices up. Is there any proportion as to how much is for increased number of pupils going into independent schools and how much have they put their prices up? Um, oh, I was going to answer that. No, it goes yeah. on. Um, um, the, 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 um, Predominantly, it's growth in number of places. Um, they they have always been quite expensive. So um, the we are part of the West Midlands uh, price <clears throat> uplift framework. I think it's Sandwell Local Authority hosts that. Um, they've recently revamped it, and they're doing a good job now. It used to be very slow, um, but they do absolutely interrogate and limit price uplift from uh, these private provide, independent providers. Um, very rigorously and um, rarely does a, a request for an uplift go through at the rate the provider asks for. So it's pretty tightly controlled, that aspect of it. Right. Following on from that, how is the quality of the education these students receive monitored? Who does that? What sort of profit do these independent schools make? And although you've already said you're setting up a secondary autism unit, are there any other ways that their costs can be reduced? Because 60% is one hell of an increase. And lastly, as inflation looks likely to go up to 8 to 10% in the autumn, how will that affect all these figures? Um, right. Do you, in turn, yeah. Thank you, Les. <laughs> got, my, my memory's fading these days. Um, so, uh, the... Quality. Quality, yeah. I mean, obviously, they're, they're inspected... Uh, by either Ofsted or by Estin, the Welsh um, inspectorate. Um, so what for one of our providers was inspected last week. We haven't heard the outcome yet. Um, we make visits, so uh, we try and ensure that uh, 
one member of the education staff goes to the annual um, review of each child, um, and there may be uh, requests for other information. It is very difficult at distance to do that, which is why I much prefer to place in our local schools. But um, you know, the the previously we we our schools have been very good and accommodating and, and fitted in beyond almost reasonableness uh, as many pupils as they can. So. Uh, you know the the uh, the difficulty is capacity in in checking those places, but we do insist that there are visits, and if they are joint social care and education placements, then there are also social care visits to the care side of that, and sharing of information if necessary. So that that's how quality is monitored. Um, do they it? make excessive profits? Uh, depends who you ask. Um, there was a, I understand there was a television programme revealing the profits that some uh, groups of independent schools have made recently, um, talking about excessive profits. Um, other schools do not thrive and go under or, or are taken over, so that they're not successful. So I guess like lots of businesses, it, it varies. But um, I would, again, much rather personally that we, uh, we spend money on local provision um, and, and kind of uh, invest to say, you know, have a kind of invest to save model as far as we can take that within the money we have, rather than, um, you know, spend on, on providers that have a profit motive. But I think it, to balance that, we will always have a need for very specialist placements. Uh, and, and we have to pay for some of those. So, but it's, as you say, it's, it feels like wasted money, but demand has increased dramatically. You know, it's it's not that we we had sufficiency strategies to predict what uh, the numbers. We've got a capital investment strategy, but even as the ink was drying on that, the the demand has outpaced the predictions for that. So um, it's a very difficult situation, and it's not unique to Herefordshire either. Right, and the last one was with inflation like to go to eight or 10 percent in the autumn is that going to put pressure on all the figures uh in an upwards direction uh almost certainly yes but um i think part of that interrogation of price uplift is is to work out you know what are real wage costs because that because that largely that's the thing that drives the the inflation in these placements because uh, some of the children have got, you know, two to one staffing and that kind of thing, you know, very intensive staffing. So, um, uh, you know, it's it's the true cost of wage inflation, not the fact that, you know, um, energy prices have necessarily gone up by a dramatic amount. You know, it, it, it's the extent to which those energy increases will feed into the pro into the salary uplifts for the staff, I would say. I mean, there will be some other costs. They do have to pay energy. But, you know, it's it's trying to make some sense of, of, of those inflationary figures rather than assuming that it's going to be at, a, at an extremely high level. And that's the job of the, the price uplift framework. Right. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and Kerry, you have a, quest, a hand raised. Yeah, thank you, Cathy. Um, it's a question for, for Malcolm, really. I, I fear I know the answer, but um, first of all, a thank you to Malcolm and to the to Les and to the Budget Working Group, who gave this a good airing recently as well. Malcolm, we, we, we are using the 8.8 .8 million DFE additional grant in the calculations, aren't we? Which is which was unexpected, I think, from memory. Do we do we get a sense of whether that's an annual grant from DFE? I, I take it it's a recognition by the DFE mm -hmm. that this is overstretched across the country. But but is that a one-off? Do we know, or do we just not know? Might it be an annual grant to help boost the figures? Or do we just await the green paper, I suppose? Right. Um, Herefordshire received three points, just over three million pounds in a supplementary grant before um, Christmas. Uh, <clears throat> the vast majority of that was paid out to schools and 0.8 million was for the high needs block. And I expect this to be rolled into um the high knees block on an annual on a to be consolidated so it's an annual payment um yeah. the dfe prepare their dedicated school grant sums during the summer uh and obviously uh they 
you can't make last minute changes to DSG. And so they have put forward the um, supplementary grant. Uh, the supplementary grant that has been given to schools is a fundamental part of paying for the uh, increase of teacher starting salaries to 30,000. So the supplementary grant, <laughs> grant to schools will be rolled into the national funding formula for schools next year. Uh, and by the same token, uh, those same pressures apply in special schools and the high needs block. So I would expect the 0.8 million to be rolled into uh, the high needs block next year. Yeah. So it should be consolidated. And yeah. I think it's just a matter of timing on DFE's part that says it that says it wasn't. Okay, that's helpful. Thanks, Malcolm. Thanks, Thank Jeff. you, Kelly. Uh, and Steve Kendrick, you have a hand raised. think you're on mute Steve thank you can anyone hear Steve I can't no okay no okay um, oh yeah yeah I can hear you then yeah okay sorry um, yeah. I'm having problems with my laptop today so just a question for Les Les in terms of the secondary autism hub when are you predicting this to be open and are there any calculations or any projected savings moving forward? Uh, I, th I think it's too early, I'm afraid, Steve. I don't, I don't think it, it, these, because of it requires capital investment, um, then uh, it has to go through a series of stages of governance uh, to achieve that. And um, I think it's unlikely we will have that in place by September. That had been the original hope, but um, uh, so... Uh, I would certainly hope by the following September, if not mid-year. I, I, I can't actually see a particularly valid reason if we, you know, it will involve recruiting staff and all sorts of things. So, uh, but I can't particularly see any reason why we couldn't, you know, why it has to be a September start. So um, I would hope for uh, probably sometime in, 2023, I suppose. That would be my best guess. Um, thank you. Uh, thank you, That's Les. Um, Hello? Thank you, Les. We lost you for a minute then, or at least I did. Oh, dear. I'm in a council building. It's normally in my home broadband. Okay. Um, where did I where did I break up then? So uh, you talked about twenty twenty three. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, I was saying we, we have to go through a logical series of stages. We've we've uh, sort of outlined what it might look like. We're now in the process of looking for possible um, buildings sites, and also uh, we will be seeking a an existing um, local um, school provider. Um, to um, to run that. So, um, but again, we're trying not to get into a, a sort of massive exercise um, rather than expressions of interest, but we do need to follow the proper legal guidance on that. So, um, I thought someone else, oh, David, did you have a hand up? I did, but uh, let's just answer. I was okay. asking where it was supposed to be located. Okay, uh, so, I, I, I was so wondering if I'd missed that, but uh, obviously Les just answered that question that they're looking for sites. Yeah, to, to be a little bit more precise, the majority of the population is in Hereford and our transport system is a radial one back into Hereford. So it's likely it, it would be most beneficial in, in the, you know, sort of Herefordshire area, not necessarily in the city, though. Uh, no, I wasn't asking that really. I was asking whereabouts in Hereford. I assumed it would be in Hereford. Yeah, I, was just yeah, I think, I think that's the only sensible... Yeah, yeah. I was just wondering if you had any particular... Because obviously, uh, being on the board of the, the uh, HPRS uh, and the, the kind of issues surrounding you know potential rebuilding and so forth, I didn't know if uh, anything was going to be connected together. Uh, well, we, we are... We get at the moment an annual capital grant from the DfE, which provides, um, you know, it's really trying to provide additional interim places. It's not designed for big builds, 
Um, okay. And the HPRS considerations about remodeling some of the, you know, in, an interim measure to remodel is, is part of the same grant funding as um, this autism hub would be. So, so it's kind of watch this space at the moment. We're not quite sure what it's going to be. Yeah, we've got three or four interim projects we're looking at okay. associated with that grant. It won't pay for all of them, and some of them will have to roll into the following, um, you know, the, the following year's grant, which has already been flagged by the DFE. So we know we will get some. Um, but uh, uh, it is all subject to cabinet council. Of course. Reads, you know, so. of course. Thank you. Um, Paul Jennings, on behalf of the Budget Working Group, did you want to make any comment? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I'm <clears throat> speaking on behalf of the, of the group, I mean, as, as Kerry pointed out, we did give this a good airing a week or two ago. Um, I think it's important that we remember the post-pandemic impact when we're looking at all of this, and, and we did discuss at length the delayed speech and language, lack of so socialisation and increased SEMH needs that we've all seen as a result across the age range, right across the age range, um, post-pandemic. Um, we very much welcomed the, uh, the concept of the autism hub and you know, agree with um, comments that have been made about trying to reduce out-of-county spending in the future. Um, and, and I had some concern as to the fact that we're now looking at a deficit situation, but I think it's worth saying that we've done incredibly well to remain out of deficit so far. Um, those are the real main areas that we discussed, um, but we were very happy to support the budget proposal that's been put before Schools Forum this morning. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Paul. Um, so thank you, everybody, if, if everyone's had um, their questions answered. Um, Clark, can you just confirm, are we required to approve this for Cabinet? Um, uh, yes, we will take a, a vote. Um, as um, Malcolm's explained, this is about you making recommendations to uh, the Cabinet member who will take the final decision, but we, we do normally just take a vote to, to show confirmation. Um, and just a reminder, that's the recommendations in the report with those two corrections that Malcolm had indicated in his presentation. Okay, so if you could um, set the screen for voting, please, Chair. Please, Clark. And that should be on screens now. <clears throat> uh, and I can confirm those have been carried, Chair. Thank you, Sarah. Um, I'd just like to uh, thank everybody for attending and in particular thank um, Malcolm for the preparation of that um, that finance that that need the budget high needs budget that he's worked on so hard and I'd also like to thank um, Les for his input and um, Paul on behalf of the budget working group. Thank you everybody for your attendance. Uh, the next meeting of Schools Forum is Friday the fifteenth of July. Seems a long way away. Um, and um, please, Sarah, could you please confirm that the live stream um, will be stopping? Thank you, Councillor Toynbee, for that comment I can read. Thank you very much. <laughs>